literally texted it to him and five minutes later I get an email with him and the whole team being like, hey guys, sign this. Here you go. Holy shit. Hey guys, welcome back to Rave Culture Cast. We are here on Groove Cruise Day 2 and I am here with Cosmalia. Hi! How's it going? It's good, how are you? I'm doing great. My first Groove Cruise, so I'm like loving the vibes. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> so like, you're welcome. a veteran, right? <laughs> <laughs> how many sets were you playing? I am playing six sets. <laughs> okay, so very booked and busy. <laughs> yeah, pre-party, um, I played one yesterday at the theater with Diplo. I played, nice. I'm playing one after this at the casino. I'm playing two yep. tomorrow. One, one a solo set and one a back to back to back with Vanessa and LP Giabi. Yes. And then the very last day, I am playing at Q Smokehouse with Unlearn Records. Oh my god. Okay. Not busy at all or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> so how for you, like coming back, like how do the experiences continue to top themselves on group cruise? So every experience is like its own unique thing. So I'm bringing my best friend with me for our second time. Nice. So it's okay. like my second group cruise with my best friend and like she just makes it like amazing. Yeah. But like <laughs> every time I come back and I see the same people over and over again and it's just like it really has a family feel. It's like oh it feels like home. It's good, good to like come back to yeah, yeah, yeah. it feels like home there's like unique experience this is my first cruise ship festival too oh, and there's cool. kind of like unique experiences that like you wouldn't get anywhere else anywhere that like you can just like you said casino like you're just walking through and just see a pop-up set yeah do you have, like, a, do you have a favorite memory um <laughs> one of my favorite memories actually was um the first one i ever went to with my best friend it was the west coast one cabo mm -hmm. and we had just got done flopping around cabo yeah. uh, <laughs> we had like ran off to go find tacos and like we found them yeah. and then we were on the little the little tiny boat that takes you back to the, to the ship mm -hmm. and in the like out of the window of the little boat, we see these lights going crazy. <laughs> and as we approach the main cruise ship, we realize that they have these insane lights, lights, like lasers sticking straight up into the air, like a beacon. Yeah. And we like we're like, we have to go there. Yeah. We have to go. Like it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. I still have a video of was it. Was it just like fans? Throwing a party or no? No, no, it was um the main like I guess they just wanted to get people back on the boat. Okay. So they were like, hey, look how cool this is. Then it worked. Please come back, <laughs> right? Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was one of the most insane light displays and it was coming off the top of a cruise ship and it was uh, going into space. It was <sighs> it was so cool. <laughs> That's why I feel I'm like excited because like the energy is still very like fresh yeah. on the cruise and there's just like a lot of experiences still to come. Yeah, so I'm yeah. For that. But you did okay, so you mentioned LP, so you are playing with like the Fem House yeah. crew, which I like love them near and dear to my They're heart amazing. so like, how does it feel to be a part of that family now <laughs> so I have looked up to both of those women specifically Vanessa for a very 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 long mm -hmm. time um, Vanessa was like to me like she was the female face of Dirty Bird because mm -hmm. um, I originally really wanted to be a Dirty Bird artist before my sound kind of went another direction mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. you know I always just wanted to like meet her you know mm -hmm. and the fact that I'm playing a set with her yeah. is just like <laughs> I my mind I still can't wrap my mind yeah. around it and they're, they're both the coolest people ever like they're so welcoming and they're so nice and it's just oh it's just such a great feeling it's like a full circle moment for you it really is as a well. full circle moment yeah. yeah and like super empowering just to like have like an all-female lineup exactly. as well exactly that, that support that they have behind it is and incredible. the fact that they wanted me to join them like yeah. was just i was mind i was like me yeah. <laughs> like really like oh my god <laughs> and so okay so you playing six sets i know you have like a lot of influences to your music so like how do you pick and choose like do you just like fit the vibe of the crowd the stage you're at so this is actually interesting i'm doing it differently this year okay last year i think i had four and what i did was i made playlists for every single one what i thought the vibe was going to be this okay. year i'm just going up there blind and okay. reading the crowd nice because what happened last year was i was like that I, I feel like the crowd wants something a little more chill than what i've got in this playlist mm -hmm. right now or hey uh, the person before me played hard techno and everyone's hyped up right <laughs> maybe i should play some a little heavy you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and so like that's kind of where where my mm -hmm. head is at right now and especially like a casino set you can't plan for that right right you never know what <laughs> you, you could play what you could play anything in there yeah and people would dance right so i might you might as well play the weirdest mm -hmm. stuff you got 
Does so, okay, so does Groove Cruise like just in general challenge you as an artist? Like, do you feel like you grow every time yes. you play this? Yeah. I do because first of all, the, a schedule like the one I've got. Not right. only do I have, not only do I have six sets. Yep. I have, this is my second interview today. Right. I also am doing an artist panel and I'm doing an artist hosted activity today as well. Yep. So it's just like I have to be. Yeah, on, like, on your shit. Yeah. Exactly, and, and you know, just like pace yourself, because like everybody wants to party their asses off here, and like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm partying, okay. Yeah, I'm having a good time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's also like this is the first Groove Cruise that I've done single, mm -hmm. and I just ended a three-year relationship like three weeks ago, Damn. right before coming on yeah. this boat. So like just being here, and the last one I was on was with him. Right. So there's like a lot of emotions happening, it's and I'm, you know, thing. I have one too many drinks and I start crying on the boat. Uh, no one wants me to be crying on the boat. Right. <laughs> My eyelashes were falling off. It was just a disaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so uh. like it's, it's, it's not just physical regulation, it's emotional regulation, mm -hmm. and it's mental regulation. It's a, it, it, yeah. it really is like a, a taxing it's as fun as that as it is challenging sure 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 yeah i did an intention setting workshop this morning That's, here i would cry yeah. i can't do that i will cry <laughs> well there's like there's a full moon today so like there's just like a lot of release and they oh yeah my God, no wait maybe yeah, that's so why i was might. crying <laughs> i've been having crazy dreams this week but yeah and it, we just talked about like what do you intend to get out of this like and it, they just reminded us like there's some so many people here to like release things find themselves like whatever you are like we're all coming from a different perspective so that, that is like a transformational yeah. thing that you're getting out of it but music festivals in general i feel like are healing <laughs> everyone here is like this is a big release for a lot of people mm -hmm. in a lot of ways yeah. and i i would say this festival sets sets other from i mean not just like floating festivals mm -hmm. but just festivals in general yeah is everyone here i feel like for the most part is very responsible mm -hmm. and they take Great. they take accountability mm -hmm. and they don't abandon their friends and right. like you don't have some of the weird more mm -hmm. you don't you don't have the weird vibes that you have at some other festival <laughs> everyone yeah. here is like respectful they're responsible very plur i hate yes. to say it but like it's plur yeah safe you feel safe absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely i feel safe here. to be yourself in, in a way too to be, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay, I want to chat about unicorns only oh as God. well. Okay, so well, you curate a lot of music, so I kind of I ask a lot of people because everyone has a different answer. But how do you like to find your own like new music? Like, where do you explore? So, unicorns only was created to be a showcase for artists that don't really have a platform. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's going to be some songs in there from bigger artists, but mm -hmm. like for the most part, it's an art. It's an opportunity to showcase like people that are coming up, mm -hmm. and I really like their sound. Yeah. Um, I find it mostly through InFlight or through my promos. I get a ton of emails every day. Really? Yeah. Once nice. I started it, yeah, I was yeah. like, listen to this, listen to this. And like, <laughs> I do, I listen to all of it. Yeah. I'm not going to put all of it in my set, but right. you know, I, like, I I really try to give everybody a chance when it comes to that because mm -hmm. you really never know. Mm -hmm. You never know right. when some you're, someone's going to, somebody, random person, never heard of them in your entire life, sends right. you an incredible song. Sure, sure, sure. That happens to me all the time. Like, I'll, yeah. I'll have somebody I've never heard of. No one's ever heard of them. Mm -hmm. They have less than a thousand followers. And they'll send me a track, and I was like, oh my god, this is so good. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that even ends up with me doing co collaborations with people like that. Right. So, cool. yeah, it's, it's, it's just a great way to discover new music. Yeah. I find people on, like, festival lineups a lot of the times, too, because I, I do a lot of festival reviews on my channel. Yeah. So I like, comb through the entire lineup, literally listen to everyone, and I find the same thing. Like, you go on their Spotify, they have, like, less than 2,000 streams, and mm -hmm. you're like... Where's this gold been sitting this whole time? My Spotify numbers are so bad right yeah. now. They're terrible. <laughs> so, let's go support, all right? We're going to link your information <laughs> down below. Um, okay, secret weapon in your set right now. Do you have a favorite track you're playing? Rockstar. Nice. It's my new track. <laughs> Gene Fair signed it three days ago. Holy shit. Yeah, and I played it. I opened uh, I opened for him last night at um, the Diplo's Higher Ground stage. And he was mm. like, this is such a good track. I just love yeah. this track. I literally texted it to him. <laughs> And five minutes later, I get an email with him and the whole team being like, hey guys, sign this, here you go. Holy shit. I, know. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say, cause you just signed with some like amazing labels, like Night Base is one of my favorites yeah. as well. Yeah, really they're I'm fantastic, like, okay, yeah. I was gonna ask what that experience was like. Night Base is a really, really fun label. Um, it's really great to be able to work with Aaron and AC Slater. Mm -hmm. He's very hands-on in his label management, which I feel like a lot of bigger labels the founders really aren't that hands-on in sure. it. Like they have their teams, they'll have their ANRs, and sometimes like it's what's kind of disappointing to me is I'll have a label that's like 
ran by a bigger artist, no, like they'll send it to their manager, they'll send the demos to their manager, and then the, ma the manager sends it to the intern. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah, yeah no, I'll yeah. get, I'll get, I see, I see who's listening. I see the listen. I know your intern listened to that. And it's just like, but you don't get that when I face. Aaron himself goes through, and he also helps you develop your sound. Nice. Um, That's awesome. I don't know if my sound is going to continue to go in the night bass direction. I'm sure a few songs of mine will. Sure. Um, but I'm kind of leaning more now this year has started out. I'm kind of leaning more on the kind of like groovier, more melodic side of things. Nice. Um, Love that. You know, and I feel like that might be an issue <laughs> with my career in general. It's like my manager could probably tell you. It's like <laughs> I refuse to pigeonhole myself. Okay. Yeah. I try to kind of spread my sound out. Might be a little too wide for some people, but. At the same time, it gives me a good range, and it, mm -hmm. it gives me the gifts that every little, that every different genre has to offer sure, to kind sure. of combine into my own unique sound. I love that though. That I think that allows you to challenge yourself though. And I mean, it does. like, okay, so are there any? Because I know trends can kind of like give or take, but are there any trends in dance music that you like right now? I love the saw, stab bass lines that are happening mm, right now okay. and I've been making so many of them <laughs> and like I feel like drop synths kind of took a hiatus for a while but they're coming back okay. and I love that yeah. for me because <laughs> yeah. I've never stopped using them yeah um and then <laughs> things people not being afraid to sign melodic stuff with female vocals mm -hmm. I really love like um like what John Summit has been doing with his label and just like his releases in general yeah I think like I mean a lot of people kind of look to him right now mm -hmm. um, him teaming up with singers and songwriters and I am mm -hmm. a singer and a songwriter and yeah. I also produce so yep. like I'll sing my own vocals and I'll write the lyrics and record it and mm -hmm. then produce the whole track around it that's awesome yeah. and I feel like that's not something a lot of people do mm -hmm. Definitely <laughs> so not, yeah. not like I remember being told you'll never get signed to this label if you have your vocals in it it has to be like like, no, I mean, it's just like, yeah. what? Why the, right, the why? fuck that label? I don't care right. about that. Like, you know? Yeah. Now I'm really happy that it is trending in that direction because I think that dance music, as fun as, and as powerful as it can be, just like with one producer, mm -hmm. you know, adding that layer of songwriting, mm -hmm. you know, that's what I makes, think that makes you like completely special. Exactly. Yeah, no one else can do what you do or have your experiences. To yeah, share, so. I mean, even if like if, if a producer can't, you know, sing and songwrite, it's like with John Summers, like he's bringing in other people, people yeah, you yeah. know, just but you're you're working together to create something that has more meaning, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I, I really like the way that it's trending towards that right now. Okay, so for you, did vocals like was that always a part of the plan, or were you like DJ producing first, and then you decided like? We're I have been. Down? I'm a classically trained opera singer. I, Sick. Okay. I was born with perfect pitch, and I've been. <laughs> Holy shit! I have been teaching voice lessons throughout my whole career. Amazing. Okay. Um, I still do. Yeah. I still like uh, kids. I teach kids. That's awesome. And adults. But okay, um, yeah. Yeah, like vocals have been singing has been a huge part of my life. I think mm -hmm. my my first favorite my first favorite singer was. Britney Spears and okay. the Spice Girls. Nice. And I would literally yeah, yeah. run around, <laughs> run around my house with a hairbrush, yeah. write my own songs, sing them, play them on the piano That's awesome. since I was six years old. So it's always been part of the message. I found electronic music after I graduated high school. I'm 31 now, mm -hmm. about to be 32. Oh nice. my god. <laughs> I'm gonna be 33 next month. So I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yes. In um, our prime. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. It, yeah. We are. Really, yep. That's something people forget. Your 30s are your prime. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I so totally agree. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm. I am coming into my prime in terms of my so my songwriting as well. It's nice. just I've been like I said, crazy crazy world. Mm -hmm. Didn't have time to finish some of the songs that I really wanted to play on group mm -hmm. careers. I'm trying not to beat myself up for it. Yeah. I'm just going to show what I've got and mm -hmm. you know use the connections I make here to share that in the future okay and then my last question before I have a lightning round to end but okay oh what's the next best best oh my god big thing for you this year thinking <laughs> okay so this is what I really want to do and I did talk to you about this a little bit yeah. I really want to try to create a I'm researching mm -hmm. trying to create a concept album based on the founding fathers of dance music and also the venues nice. that kind of shaped house music Ooh. I really want to travel around to see where all these places are oh, nice. okay, cool. um, I've already created one song called the loft which is based off of the original loft in Greenwich Village which was Same. literally nice. a guy's house it was not a venue yeah. it was some dude's house and That's every Saturday that they would have people there I want to kind of expand 
I want to go to like New York. I want to go to Chicago. I want to go to Detroit. I want to mm -hmm. play at all these different places. Sick, yeah, yeah. Um, and then find a label that is interested in the concept. And there have been some pretty big labels that yeah. I've been talking to about it. Nice. And I can't say who, but I'm Sick. very excited for that. And that is the next big thing. Amazing. Okay. And I got a little lightning round. This is a get to know, get to know you better. Okay. Morning or night person? Night. <laughs> Duh, I'm a DJ. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> window, middle, or aisle seat when flying? It used to be window, now it's aisle. Okay. Text, call, voice memo. Which do you prefer? <sighs> Please text me. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Favorite genre to listen to outside of EDM? Um, 90s alternative rock. Okay. What decade of music has influenced you the most? 90s. 90s? For sure, 90s. Love it. Okay, if you could swap lives with another DJ, who do you want to switch with? <laughs> No, I, I like my life. Right. Okay, we can keep that. LP, right? LP. LP, I was okay. going to say. LP, all right, people, come on. Yeah. LP, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest DJ pet peeve? Um, When people... Oh my God, this might get hate. <laughs> when people um don't have like their a b on center okay. and like if you touch the bottom crossfader okay. accidentally it will just like swip swap between oh shit it's okay. horrible that happened to me at a big festival one time and i i just because no one ever does that and i yeah. saw it i was like oh my god it's yeah. it terrible <laughs> uh favorite type of wine we're doing a wine tasting this weekend too, um, right? <laughs> uh napa valley cabernet nice okay and then finish the sentence in one year i will be thriving yes absolutely <laughs> love it thank you so much for your time of course good luck with the rest of the sets you're gonna be incredible i appreciate thank you. you thanks guys bye